بیشتر استاد Amen. Amen. Yes. All right. Let us uh, read in the book of First Corinthians, chapter eleven, verse twenty-four. First Corinthians eleven twenty-four reads, and when he has given thanks, he broke it and said, "Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me." People of God, fellow Christian. Let us partake in the body of Christ, the body that was shed for you and I, so that we may have life and have eternal life. Let us partake in this blood. Let us express life that we receive through the body of Christ. Let us partake. Let us pray. God Almighty, we thank you for this body that has been given unto us. It's a sign that we are yeah, in here with you, and we pray that by partaking in this body of yours, if any one of us are sick, we will get uh, healing in the name of Jesus. Any malfunction in our body will vanish, and this will give us life. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Let us pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are going to partake of the blood of the blood. We are going to read in the book of 1 John chapter 1 verse 7. 1 John chapter 1 verse 7. It read, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purify us from all sins. Amen. Yes. Amen. If we have our juice, let us pray on it and then partake. If you have your juice, say amen. 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 Let us pray. God Almighty, we thank you for your son, Jesus, that you sent on earth for mankind so that whoever believes in him shall have life and have life eternal. And through the blood of Jesus, the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary, our iniquities, our infirmities, all is gone. We are made whole by the precious blood of Jesus. This blood will reconcile us back to our Father. It make us righteous before God. Let us partake in this blood in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for your precious blood, the blood that reconciles us back to you, the blood that gives us healing through the blood of Jesus, through the strap of Jesus, we are here. We are made whole. We have peace in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 I'm going to take this opportunity to thank the leadership of this ministry, to thank Pastor Kwame, Mama Mildred, Pastor John, and every one of you present at this night. May the Lord bless us. Tonight, I'm going to minister. My name is Didi. For the one that do not know me, this is my first time ministering on this platform. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will help me, that myself will decrease and the Holy Spirit will take over, that the Lord Jesus will be revealed through me. The word that I'll speak will be the word that comes from heaven, not me. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will help each one of us through this administration. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 
the topic that I'm bringing tonight is a disciple of Christ. I'm about to talk about a disciple of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, most of us are familiar with this topic. It will be a reminder for most people and maybe new for some of us, but I believe together we'll all have an understanding and a better approach to it. Amen? Yes. Amen. 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 I pray and I believe tonight uh, topic will be an exhortation and will be a discussion also. Time to time I may ask you, my fellow Christian, to help me the way you see what I'm saying, what you want to ask so away, then we can all proceed. So we'll be uh, discussing, I'll talk to you guys will respond as well. Amen? Amen. 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 What makes a disciple of Christ? What makes you and I a disciple of Christ? Who is a disciple? I'll go ahead and say a disciple is the one who truly listens and learns. A person who will put into practice what he or she learns. Amen. 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 A disciple is a student. A disciple is a follower. One who trusts and believes in a teacher and follow that teacher's word and examples. Amen. Amen. And what makes us a disciple of Christ? There are four levels that I'm going to speak of. First, we will talk about having a relation with Jesus. Second, we're going to, we need to love God and love our neighbor. Third, we have to be obedient and trust God through the process. And fourth, we have to talk about the mission. The mission is why we are on earth for, we are here so that um, others may be saved as well. We are here for the winning of souls for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Amen. Those are the four points that I'll speak about tonight. Amen. Amen. The first Amen. point, yeah, the first point is having a relation with God, having a relationship with God. How do we have that relationship with God? If I may ask. Anyone want to answer? Uh, reading his word. Good. What else? Spending more time um, with, the, with the Lord. And um, yes. having, a, having a relationship with God is um, communing with him, meaning you talk with him, you walk hand in hand with him, you get to understand him and his mindset. That's good. All the answers are great. Amen. Amen. Meditating on his word as well. Amen. That's good. That's great. That's how we fellowship with Jesus. I will say what I put down is to be a disciple of God and to have that relationship with God. We need to have an intimate and instructive relationship with him. We need to commune with him daily. We need to have a life of prayer. We need to spend time in the world as others have said earlier. We need to seek first the will and the man of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, amen. Amen. If we read in the book of 1 Corinthians 11 verse one, if you can go through that place. First Corinthians chapter 11, 11. verse one. That is the preface in translation. 
NIV is fine, that's okay. Hallelujah. Sorry. Is Paul talking? Paul saying, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. To have that relationship with Christ, we need to go by the recommendation, the laws that we have in the Bible, what Jesus wants us to do. We need to live a life as the followers of Christ. We need to resemble Christ in any given situation, how will Jesus behave? How will he react to insult? How will he react to adversary? That's what Paul is telling us to do here, that we should act like the way Christ will do. If we call our deaf Christian, uh -oh. can you all hear me? Can you all hear me? Yes. yes, I can hear you. Yes. Amen. If we want to have that relationship with Jesus, we need to know him. We need to follow him to his full step. We need to imitate him the best we could by the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Being a follower of Christ, we have to do what is asked of us most of the time. We need to also maintain a good communication skill with him. When the Lord will be talking to us, we have to pay attention. Sometimes to very, uh, to carefully pay attention to the word of God. Sometimes we need to isolate ourselves. We need to stay away from distractions. We need to give him the time that is due for him so that he can minister to us. Sometimes mm -hmm. if we have a schedule, we have a set time aside when we speak to the Lord, when we just pour our heart to him and hear from him, then we'll know the will of the Lord, the mind of God and we'll act accordingly. Amen. Amen. And for us to hear him, we need to know the person that he is. We need to know what he likes. We need to know what he hates so that we'll be in a good relationship with him. Amen. Amen. We need also, we need to acknowledge him being our savior. We need to put him first in everything that we will do. All our decision, everything that we will face, we have to bring it to the Lord first before we take any decision. Amen. Yes. Amen. Anyone want to add to it, please? So far, so good. All right. Thank you. Number two, the second point is love God and love our neighbor. We have to love God and love our neighbor. That's the other recommendation that the Lord gave us. How do we love God and how do we love our neighbors? Let us go to the book of Luke, Luke 10, verse 27. Okay. Luke 10. Amen. 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 Mommy is calling for you. Oh. Luke 10, 27, read. He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbors 
your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Amen. My question to us is how do we love God? What do we do by showing to God that we love him? I will say we love God by showing him respect. Mm -hmm. We love God by fearing God. If we can also read in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 9, verse 10, please. Can you repeat the verse in Proverbs, please? Proverbs 9, verse 10. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Proverbs 9, verse 10. It says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Amen. When, when we love God, we will fear the Lord. All his instruction in the Bible, we have to follow them. Amen. Yes, amen. Amen. When it says that we should love him, with all our heart and with all our soul, meaning that when we face uh, trial, challenges, we need to count on God and we need to do the best thing that he, require, he requires of us. Amen? Yes. Loving God is spending time at his presence. If all that pertains to us, we ought to love God. We are to show him that gratitude. We are to appreciate God for who he is, for all he does for us. We have to appreciate him for the bread of life. We have to acknowledge him in everything that we do. We need to know that he's a sovereign God. He's the sovereign king. We need to give him the first place in everything. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. We need to reverence his holy name. We should not allow any other word proceed out of our mouth because any word has consequences. Amen. Amen. This is all reminders for all of us to be a good disciple, a disciple of Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. If we have to proceed and talk about loving our neighbors, how do we love our neighbor? How do we show love? How do we show compassion? to our neighbors. Yeah. He summed into one sentence, said, do unto others as you have them do unto you. Amen. Amen. Yes. The, way, the way you want to be treated, that's how you love your neighbor. We have to be fair to one another. We have to assist one another in help, in need, in every possible way we can reach out to the other person. That's how we show love to our neighbor. Amen. Mm. Sometimes a smile, just a smile, can go a long way. Amen. You don't know how the other person is doing. You don't know what is going on in that person at that present time. By passing by, you see someone, you greet them, you smile to them. Nowadays, we have masks. We are covering our masks up. Uh, facial expression is hidden, but when you smile, there's a light that comes through your eyes. The other person can tell that you've been nice and you've been smiling to them. Amen? Amen. So but, um, can I touch on that verse sure. where we are, Luke? Mm -hmm. What was that, Luke 10? 15? Yeah. No, no, that 27. Luke 10, 27. Yes. Okay. So sometimes it's not as easy mm -hmm. as, as saying love your neighbor as you love yourself. Because while the Bible do tell us no man hates his own flesh, mm -hmm. hate his own flesh, it, it also means that some people doesn't, don't know how to love themselves. They've never really experienced love in that capacity. Mm -hmm for them to be able to show love, even save folk. 
Because remember, people that are saved are coming out the world. And so they're coming with all their baggages until mm -hmm. deliverance has taken place. And so mm -hmm. a lot of people have been treated wrongly by people that they trust and people that say that they would love them, but turned around and do them harm. Mm -hmm. So this same verse here in Luke 10, 27, mm -hmm. if we take a look at the verse above that, verse 25, and then I'm going to give you the point that I'm making. Yeah. It says, and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and oh. tempted him saying, master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, now Jesus is going to talk. What is it? What is written in the law? And then he says, and how readest thou? And then he repeated what was written in the law, right? Yes. When it comes to everything else is good, except love thy, thyself as thy neighbor or love thy neighbor as thyself. So now we look at John, John 13 and 34. Mm -hmm. That answers that according to what God would have us to answer. Yes. And, he, and Jesus now, you see all that in red uh, from 31. He says, verse 34 says, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Amen. By this, all men shall know that you are my disciples, mm -hmm. if you have loved one another. So before we can pour out love like that, we have to do it according to how Christ, how God or the Holy Spirit has loved us, right? Mm -hmm. So now the standard is not ourselves because we in ourselves are weak. Mm -hmm. You understand? And somebody today, somebody can tell you that they love, love you and tomorrow because you did something or say something that they're not pleased with, that love went out the window. You understand? But yes. if we do it according to the way God loves us, then our discipleship is, is pure because yes. we're God has done so much for us through Jesus Christ that we would live a grateful life with a grateful heart. And then we would want to show that same love and gratitude to someone else and use God as the standard, Jesus as the standard, the Holy Spirit as a standard and not ourselves. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Amen. Jones. Amen. Amen. And if you want to pan on Proverbs 9, verse 10, we have to fear God at all times. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If we place God first, we should be able to fear him and the why he requires from us. Amen. 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 And for loving the neighbor, we need to respond, respect anyone and everyone. We don't need to pray favoritism. And when he asks to say, uh, love your neighbor, it doesn't mean only your fellow Christians, brothers and sisters. It goes to the unbelievers, whoever you meet, whoever you come across with. That's how you show that love to the neighbor also. Amen. Amen. Yeah. How are the other ways we can show love to a neighbor? Anybody else? Um. Proverbs says that if you have two coats and your neighbor is cold and and don't have one, it, it... excuse me, it's not you don't have to pray about whether or not you should you should help them. This is something you have two coats. You can give them one, so yeah. they too be warm, and mm -hmm. you can help our, your neighbor by, um, you know actually just communicating basically or there's so many different ways 
if we're literally going with the neighbor, just uh, a kind gesture would do it as well. Um, my neighbor here, physically, she doesn't speak to anybody. I mean, she sees you out and she act like she don't, she don't see you. But in order for me to win her, I have to treat her different from what she's given out the way Christ would want me to do it. So she went on vacation. She went somewhere. I can't say vacation. She just wasn't there. And it was garbage day. So I went over there and I took her garbage out because it's right there by her garage. And I know she have garbage because I can see it, right? So I put the garbage out. Even when she returned, she doesn't say she, thank you because I know she saw me on her camera. But nonetheless, it wasn't about her. It was about the kingdom of God, right? Nice. And I do it nice. as unto the Lord. So Amen. those are some of the things that we can do or whatever the Holy Spirit lead us to do for the neighbor. And Amen. you don't have to look for the neighbor to give you a response. You mm -hmm. know, it, it didn't even matter if she gave it to me or not. I just did it because I believe that it was a good thing neighborly to do. And also if you're trying to win somebody, you win them over with love, show them something different than, than okay. other people have done, you know, yeah. um, that they've not experienced really without a uh, string being attached, so to speak. Amen. 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 Anyone else? Amen. Um, um, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Sister Mander. No, I was just I was just saying amen to what Pastor Jen said. Um, especially the first um which was which she talked about loving yourself first. And that resonated so much with me because you cannot give what you don't have. Amen. amen. So yeah. I was just saying amen. To that. Absolutely. Amen. And uh, just to um to add also, I think I'm um, like the way you could love also is like um through like um is it sacrifices? Like it depends, like giving up something, um, something valuable, right? For the sake of someone, you know, that's a way to of like showing love. Okay. Amen. 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 And also I was thinking of um also your commitment, you know. You can like um, you can like commit yourself also like towards um, towards somebody that um you're gonna like um see that um whatever is it that probably some so that's probably somebody might be going through something right so you commit yourself really give your 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 time your everything to that that you're gonna see that this person gonna come out from that situation so you amen. amen that's amen. good thank you amen. and it's kind of i have something to contribute amen. Uh, it is only here that it is very difficult for somebody to show love to your neighbor because really the neighbors are like hard difficult yes. but they don't even see somebody like another person but back home it is very easy uh, i think when i when we we changed and went to a, a a new compound a new house the neighbors there i made friend with them not not waiting for somebody to come but yes, to them. i visit in the morning, I will say good morning. Even if I'm standing at my door, I shout and say good morning to the neighbor in front or behind. And there was one big mama. I used to go to mama. And one of the things that I, I really like the way is I, I want to share with you is that when you go to a big mama like that one, anything that she is eating and she stays, share with me don't look at her pot don't look at what she is eating like it is not something that you can eat just send your hand and eat with her take just even one time she will feel good and she will feel friendly and then whatever you want to give her she will receive with 
happiness and confidence. She will know that you are friendly. She will not even think that you are high, higher than her, or she will not see you as somebody who feels higher. So just to, to, to humble yourself in front of them, not to show like I am this and that, eat with her so that when you give her what you are giving, she will receive to knowing that you are a friend to her. Mm. Mm -hmm. you, you are not help, helping her as if you see, see her suffering or anything. No, it is just that you want to share with her. That is okay. the way I, I, I did it. Oh, Mother, when you I say think. big mama, are you referring to age or size? Yeah, each, 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 big mama. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, right. because I used, I used to visit her sometimes. She will roast even cocoyam and give me some. She will roast even corn and give me. I will sit down in her kitchen and eat right there. So this mama just knew that I was her daughter. Even her daughter was coming to take her to go and stay with. She will say, no, she's all right here. This is my daughter. She takes care of me. So I don't see any reason to go anywhere again. So that is, that is how I did. Thank I you. Amen. That's something. Um, for me, I think loving your neighbor is not something that has to be comfortable all the time. Um, like, like, or convenient, right? It's sometimes really, you have to go out of your way for example, um, like it's not necessarily, well, I'm on my way to work, but since you're in that same route, let me just drop you off. It's, you know, maybe waking up early, going in the opposite direction, and then going back in the other direction to get to work. And I think loving your neighbor is not just when it's comfortable when it's convenient. It's really True. all, it's, mm -hmm. it's selflessness. Yes. Uh, Amen. It's uncomfortable. Yes. I mean, when it's uncomfortable for me, then I know that it's the right thing to do. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. When I don't want to do it. That's when I should be doing it. <laughs> Amen. Somebody earlier said commitment. Mm -hmm. That's that's very good, Sister Christine. And and a sacrifice is what you're saying. You know that you sacrifice your time to make sure that somebody else's need are being met. And that's what God does. He, he meet the need before the need arise. And, and when we say we care, that's what that word mean. Meeting care means meeting the need before the need arise. If you see that the person have a need, you don't even have to wait until they ask you, you know, mm. just allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you and tell you, if it's, if it's money you're giving, tell you what to give or whatever the case may be, the Holy Spirit will tell you how to do it. And when he does, that person's heart is already prepared to receive your word. Amen. When the Holy Spirit is giving you the, the solution to their problem. And so mm -hmm. it may, he may not give you the entire picture, but if, if he tells you to go and draw yourself to them, like Philip did with the eunuch, the eunuch when, when, Philip draw himself to him in the book of Acts. The, the eunuch was reading the Bible, but didn't have no clue about what he was reading. And Philip said, do you understand? He said, no. And he began to expound the word to him. After that, he was the, the eunuch said, now that I understand, here's water. What should keep me from being baptized? Philip says, now that you believe, you are more than welcome to be baptized. You understand? So that's the Holy Spirit leading Philip to, to draw himself to the man. And then from there, the conversation ignites. It's the same way with us. So all we have to do is just ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what can I do? Or what neighbor are you assigning me to? And how do I go about it and wait for the answer? I'm telling you, somebody is there. And I'm going to say this one thing and then I stop. My, my sister and her husband was here for almost two weeks. They just left today. But my brother-in-law took a walk in my subdivision and met a man that lives down the street, a couple of houses down. The man was out there shining his boat and everything. And my brother-in-law stopped and spoke with him. When he got back, he said, that man wouldn't stop talking. 
the man was lonely and he was just saying, you don't have to leave right now. You can stay in. And, and when just listening to him and I didn't even really get into it with him, but that thing broke my heart that somebody in my subdivision is that lonely. And of course, unless the Holy Spirit had led me to walk when I'm walking to meet him, I wouldn't have met him because I don't think I would stop and just arbitrarily just start talking to a man unless the Lord told me to. You understand? But now that I know, I will then lift him up in prayer and ask the Holy Spirit, how mm -hmm. can I be of assistance to him? Maybe my husband can go talk to him, you know? But that thing just kind of touched me that there are people right in our midst mm -hmm. and yet so far. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jones. Amen. Yeah, if we proceed furthermore, we say the Lord will show them, will attract them to ask about our Jesus. And then that will be a way to introduce them our faith. Amen. 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 Can I add? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, um... I want to say also to show love to our neighbors is like uh, with advice also. Uh, sometimes, uh, especially people here, I see like everybody by his own or with his family, like everybody is protective. Like there is some, there is some situation like uh, we can help by a good advice. Maybe you will see somebody really confused, need advice, whether it's believer or unbeliever. Mm -hmm. But I can help with my advice. I don't yeah. have to see them to, I don't have to see he or she to reach till the to the till till the 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 to the till the situation that there is no turning back or there is no solution. And I know I can save with some few words I can advise, I can help. So Amen. sometimes there is people or teenagers I see, maybe they are desperate. They can't speak with their family, with their parents. And I know I can, I can help with my words. I can, so I, I, I can help. I don't have to, to wait or to say, no, no, this is not my child. This is not my family. Mm -hmm. And after two days or three days, I just hear that they die, they suicide. So mm -hmm. communication is good. It's part of love. Amen. Thank you. The greatest love we can share with our neighbor is salvation. Amen. Yeah. Because you love them. Because you, you understand what would happen to their soul should they not die in Christ, then the greatest love that we can demonstrate is uh, we can give to our neighbor is to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The natural thing we can do. Amen. Yeah, man. Yeah. Addition. Amen. No matter where a person is in life or when, Ever they are going through, if we are we disagree or we agree with them, we still need to show them love. We need to have a self-conscious check on ourselves. We don't need to belittle anyone. We need to give um, every respect, every dignity to every human being we come across. Amen. Amen. If we can read this passage in First Corinthians. 13, 4, 4 to 6, please. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 6. Yes, please. Do you want me to read? Yeah, you or can, please. It's okay, you can. Okay. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not e easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth, amen. 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 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Yeah. If we pay close attention to every word that is found in those passages, that will help us to truly love one another and love each one we meet. Amen. Amen. Our That's third. Okay. You want to say something, Pastor Jones? No, I, I was saying that's good. Amen. Thank you. The third point is being obedient and trust God through the process. Mm -hmm. How do we go about that? How do we be obedient to God? I believe being obedient to God, one is to stay away from sin, to do what God wants us to do to know the word of God and to live by it according to what Jesus will do. That's why we should do. We should try our best to imitate Christ, no matter what the situation says. The word of God said that we live by faith, not by sight. Mm -hmm. So we have to do what God will do, no matter the surrounding, no matter the position, we have to do the will of God. We need to stand our ground and do what God will demand of us. Amen? Amen. Any ask to that? Anybody want to ask to it, please? Amen. Doing what God would demand of us. Sorry, mm -hmm. you were talking. My mind was still like challenging back to what Sister Christine and Pastor Jones had said. You know, that it's like kind of, it's really powerful, you know, loving someone is not supposed to be comfortable it's like dying of the flesh and let the spirit do the work you know because if it's the flesh will be hard as pastor john said and in these times we were living in which is so hard to even help a neighbor just with the the crimes the fear of the unknown and the fear of outside you know <laughs> like what if she went and helped that neighbor in the devil likes she stole something you know that was the holy spirit in her like do this this is the right thing to do i don't know if i would have done it so yes thank you and i just i keep praying that the lord keeps killing the 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 the, the fleshly desires and let this my spirit be more forthcoming to be able to love properly mm -hmm. without being disobedient to the lord Amen. 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 Yeah, let's speak about the third point. We have to be obedient to God. Let's read in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, 16 to 17. Please. Can you say that again, Second Timothy? Yeah, 3, 16, and 17. Okay. It says all scripture is God breath. Mm -hmm. Wow. All scripture is God, but God breath, and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen. Amen. By obeying in all things, we are showing God that we are willing and able to obey whatever he asks of us. Obedience to God is not just a way of worshiping him, but a way to get closer to him. Furthermore, it leads us to grow as people, as disciples of Christ. Yes. Amen. Yes, amen. And... Whenever we obey, meaning that we are following in his first step, obey is not easy. Sometimes when it's convenient for us, we find it easier. But sometimes it's so challenging. You ask yourself, this is tough. Shouldn't I just uh, do what my, my will and ask for forgiveness after? But we have to be conscious about our decision. 
we have to actually stand for righteousness and to do what God wants us to do. If we remember our forefathers, Abraham, when God asked him to go and sacrifice his only son, the, son, the promised son, Isaac, he did not waver to the left or right. He took it upon himself and take the child to go sacrifice. It's when he's about to take the knife to pierce him that the Lord say, don't touch the, the child. The lamb was provided for the sacrifice. So we have to do our best to be obedient to God. Amen. 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 Any want to ask to it? I would, what I would like to comment on that verse you just read, um, mm -hmm. all scripture is inspiration, but it didn't say inspiration, it's the breath of God and is good for correction, reproof, maturing, all that. We can't pick and choose in the word what it is that we're going, we are going to believe. Mm -hmm. You either believe the word or you don't because we will not receive the benefit of what God's plan and purpose for us when we choose to say, I'm going to believe this part, but I'm going to leave this part out. And because when we hear that part that doesn't taste good or doesn't mm -hmm. feel good, then we say, well, that's not for us. That definitely is for us because if God did not want us to hear it, then he wouldn't even expose us to that. And so we have to be obedient. If we want to be obedient to God, we have to be obedient to the entire word and believe what it says and, and know that what it says it can do, it will do. It's just a matter of us uh, submitting our, our minds. The Bible tells us that we are to renew our minds. And if we allow our minds to be renewed by the word, then obedience is not gonna be that far off. And yes, everything takes time. Like I said, we come from the world. You know, we came out of the world into church into Christian them into the kingdom and now we're here on this platform or a physical building to learn how to walk into the things of God and how to allow God to be God and how to allow Jesus Christ to be our Lord and our Savior how to allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us and that's why we're here so that the reverse can happen. When we came in, we came upside down, meaning that we are, we came in into a world system that's messed up. Now God wants us to be able to be right side up with everything in the proper order. And in order for us to do that in terms of believing God and trusting and obeying him, we have to allow that process to take place. Whereas we believe the word and just as much as we can go to the doctor and the doctor say you have this or that and write your prescription that you don't even know what ingredients make up this prescription, but you take it anyway, walk out there believing that this quack could definitely have the answer. And, and yet and still, this man could be schizophrenic, but he got a coat on, but we trust that. But for the word, we have difficulty. Then we need to know that there's a problem somewhere. Okay. okay, bye bye. Amen. 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 Um, Amen. I just want to add a little bit of something as we're like talking about um like it's a bit and that it's really, really like at times it's difficult because at times most often we try to like we we are being we like we act on this disobedience and then we try to make excuses like to defend ourselves right but um like forgetting to know that in the book of Deuteronomy 28 right it's all about a decision it's all about a choice you can choose to obey him you can choose to disobey him because if you read in the book of Deuteronomy 28 right he has aligned he, he has given he has like um our our line that if you obey him there are certain blessings that's gonna fall upon you. And if you disobeyed him, so there are certain things, the re repercussion that you're gonna have like effect on you. So it's a matter for us now to decide either to obey God and receive those things or 
we disobey him and we have the consequences. Amen. 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 Let us read in the second book of Timothy, chapter 2, 21 to 22. Please. Second Timothy 2, 21, 22. Amen. Okay. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special purposes, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Amen. Amen. Yeah, it's clear. If we obey, that's what we should be doing. We should cleanse ourselves. We should be ready for the master use. Whenever the Lord need his need of us, he can use us. We have to be that vessel that is ready at all time. Amen. 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 And when we say that we have to be obedient and trust God through the process, how do we trust God? We trust God by having faith in him. And how do we have faith in him? We have faith in him by listening to his word, by hearing what his word is telling us. And we need to apply what he tells us. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Read the passage earlier. Say we live by faith, not by sight. It's found in Second Corinthians five seven. We live by faith, not by sight. We can add to it when, if we can read in the book of Luke ten nineteen. Luke 10, 19 is telling us that we have faith. We have to exercise our authority in Christ Jesus. Amen. I have given you, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Amen. Amen. Can we please uh, read Ephesians 6, verse 12? For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the power of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Amen. If we look at those two scriptures, we know that uh, we, if we have faith, we can exercise our authority. Our authority is to declare it in and it shall be established. When we are facing adversary changes, trials, we stand in prayer and we declare the word of God back to him as a weapon against the enemy and we have victory. That's how we walk through faith, and that's how we trust God through the process. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah, let us read in the book of Mark, Mark 16, verse 17 and 18. Please. And these, and these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. 
They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and, and they will get well. Amen. 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 When we have faith, we will lay hand on the sick, we will lay hand on ourselves, and we will recover. Any weapon form against us shall not prosper because we stand on the word of God by faith. Any tongue that raises against us, we condemn in the name of Jesus. This is all through the trusting of God by walking in faith. When we have faith, we tell the mountain to move from one end to the other. When we have faith, we should not have faith for the big things. Let's like say someone is diagnosed with a terminal disease. That's not when we should exercise our faith. We cannot still exercise our faith when we have a simple headache, when we have stomachache, when we have something wrong with our leg, stuff like that. God is seen through every little thing and every big thing, any challenges we face in life. Amen. Amen. Anyone wants to add to it, please? Yeah, amen. Amen. Yeah, um, actually, um, like the Luke 10, 19, like, actually, it's a, it's a very good weapon of war that you could always use to, like, you know, like when you have like challenges or when you have like certain situation and at the same time and the situation that you find yourself in and when you know what, what to use because like most often like when we're going through something, we don't even know what scripture to use and uh, you are like shaking, you know, you don't even know what word to use to address that situation. That's when it's really like um, the that word does not make, it, it doesn't help it doesn't help at all because actually truly he has given us the power the authority to trample over everything on this earth but Amen. frankly speaking if you look at it most often you know it's like we have situation but we don't exercise the the, the, the power the authority yes. that those situation is like they're suppressing us and we we, we at night we weep we cry Instead of like rising up, knowing that as a child of God, he has given you authority that you have to speak towards those situations and overcome them. But most often we allow, we allow our faith. Uh, um, I don't know if it's our, I, I don't, actually, Holy Spirit, help me what word to use. It's like, we, I don't know if it's the flesh, we allow our flesh to manifest. Is it weakness or what? Pastor John, help me. <laughs> Something, Amen. So um, thank you so much for like yeah. for still reminding us that um, we have that authority, we have that power to overcome a lot of things. But instead, those things that are the one ruling us, like if you look at like those that don't even know Christ, right? At times, their faith is so strong in a way that they believe in something, but they don't they don't believe in Christ. But what they believe in, they hold to it so strong. Amen. But at times, I ask myself, but I say I'm a child of God, but look at this person. He's not even a child of God, but you know, he's, he's so committed. Then, then he's just like, the way he behaves, I'm like, oh God, help me, have mercy on me. Amen. So Amen. it's really something to really work on, to really work on, because it's like, at times, those, it, it, it makes as if the word of God is not true, of which the word of God is true. Mm -hmm. so I'll, at times, I'll say, I'll, 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 I, I, what am I saying? I'm saying because at times I go through certain things, but I, I lift up the Bible, I said, but I read this Bible, but why is it that this thing that I is it that it's I know the problem is me, the problem is no God because the word of God is true. So the problem surely the problem must be me and not the word of God. Amen. So I'm like just asking the Holy Spirit to help me. Yeah, amen. So thank you so much for reminding us amen. About, about the authority that we have and that we really have to exercise this authority. Amen. Amen. That was that was very good comment um, there. And most times we get defeated because we don't use the authority that we have. If you don't know the word to pray, the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus. So when the enemy comes up in in your 
circumstances or situation and you you lost all thoughts of what to say um and and or you don't know satan in the name of jesus christ of nazareth the blood of jesus christ is against you the bl and you just repeat that and i'm yeah. telling you just the blood he will flee mm -hmm. just the blood of jesus the Amen. name of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and he will flee, even if you don't mm -hmm. know the words. You understand? Because Amen. it is the blood of Jesus Christ that he fears. He, he don't care about our words so much. Um, and yes, if we use the word of God, yes. But if you're using your own natural words, that doesn't move him. You understand? The word of God move him and the blood of Jesus. You see, when Jesus was in the valley, in the wilderness, he wouldn't say the blood because he had not yet died and it's his blood that we're going to use. But he used the word of God, which we also can use the word of God. But greater works we will do, which now means we have the word and we have the blood and we have the name. Glory mm -hmm. to God. Mm -hmm. And we are able to use those things to defeat the enemy. With him, he used the word. You understand? Because of who he is and the mere fact that he was without sin. But we who are in this fleshly suit that do error at times and thank God for the, his mercy that we can repent. We now have the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the blood of Jesus, and we have the word of God that we are able to use against the enemy. And so that's how we're going to defeat him. But we have to remember that we do have that authority and we can send the word wherever we want it to go. You understand somebody's sick, you pray for them. Father, I send this word of healing to them. Let that mm -hmm. word search them out and it find them. And that word will not return to you void. It will accomplish where you send it. You understand? And we mm -hmm. have to be confident in that, knowing that when we speak, we, we are a speaking spirit. And when we speak a word, it will come to pass if we don't doubt and waver. Amen. You understand? We just got to believe God. And like the woman of God says, we have to know that we have that confidence in the word and believe. The key is to believe. We really can move mountains when we believe. And that's what it is. Can you imagine you, you have a faith and, and you see a mountain, you tell that mountain be removed? I mean, seriously, not just, you know, any circumstances you're in any circumstances you would pray and you would there's a difference between things that you pray for and things that you take authority over and when mm -hmm. you have the authority to bind and loose take that authority and use it it will work just don't doubt amen. that's all it is amen 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 can i please add something yeah yeah uh, uh sister mimi uh i want to add something to what uh, pastor john said to answer your question why when we face adversity we face attack opposition sometimes we don't know what to say it's just because we don't pray ahead we do not activate our weapons ahead of time we cannot learn or yeah, we cannot learn how to fight on the battleground. We're supposed mm -hmm. to be prepared. That's why that authority, we're supposed to be exercising them as a, the day we know that we have the authority. We have to be working into that authority every day. So that when we see the situation, we know what to say. Amen. That's what I wanted to add. We have to know Amen. that we are on spiritual warfare every day. We don't have to wait till we see it real before. We have to be working in that spiritual authority every day. Mm -hmm. So that when we see the enemy was in his head, we will uh, stand on our ground and apply the word and the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you for all your contribution, I appreciate. Now the fourth point is to talk about the mission. What is the mission? 
the mission is to win soul for the kingdom of God. And how do we proceed to be a good disciple of Christ? Let us read in the book of Romans, Romans 10, verse 1. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Romans. Yeah. Romans 10, verse 1, please. Okay. It reads, brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. Amen. Meaning that the hard desire of God is that every soul be saved, any human being on planet Earth that will accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior will be saved, no matter their tribe, their language, whatever they come from, their nationalities, as long as they believe, they receive Jesus in their heart and they confess him as their Lord and Savior, they will be saved. And how? As a disciple of Christ, we allow others to come to the knowledge of Christ. We need to evangelize. We need to find time to talk to someone about Jesus. No matter the conversation we are having, we should find a way to place Jesus in there because Jesus is the center of our life. Amen. Amen. Once we are being uh, uh, aware sometime, we are praying for some family members to be saved, sometimes we are, we are praying in general for souls to be saved. If we know a particular person, sometime in our workplace, we want to win them for Christ. We have to commit ourselves. We have to sacrifice. Sometimes we have to pray and fast for them. Sometimes we have to share the word of God with them. Sometimes there are resistance. They may not agree to what we are saying. It's no need for us to quarrel with them. We love them with sincere love. We refrain ourselves from them sometimes. In, the, in our closet, we still keep praying for them. This is the mandate. As a Christian, as a follower of Christ, we need to make sure everyone in our surrounding is safe. Someone has prayed for us one time to know Christ. It's our duty to pray for someone else. Amen. 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 Yeah. If we can read in the book of Romans, dear Romans, chapter 1, verse 16, please. Amen. So it says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jews and the Gentiles. Amen. Amen. Sometime in our workplace, the rule is that we don't speak to anyone about God. We don't, we don't have to mention God in our workplace, but we need to find strategies. We need to find tactics a way to win someone to Christ. Since this word is telling us that we are not ashamed of the gospel, our behavior, our conduct, the way we talk, the way we behave, our demeanor sometimes will ask about, will, will speak of, will speak on our behalf to our surrounding. They will ask themselves, they will say, that person is different among the whole crowd, you know? And that's how you stand out. And sometimes they themselves will approach you. And that, that will be the way for you to invite them to Christ, to win them to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Some of them will never have a chance to read the Bible. But the way we relate to them, the way we are fair in every given situation, the way we treat others, they, they, they have eyes, they have ears, 
they, they know these things. It's just that they cannot express it all the time, but your surrounding can tell that you are Christian. They can tell the difference between you and them. So let us uh, try our best that uh, everyone we come across to can be win for Christ. And sometimes winning soul, people are born again, but there's still some department of their life that need to be won again. I believe uh, Dr. Midra mentioned that one day to us and Pastor John also, that we need to win them at a, some level. Some people, they are born again and they are just Sunday goers. They don't have any commitment of the word of God. They have no clue of what needs to be done, what not to be done. Because he said that once you are saved, once, once you confess Jesus, you are saved. But still, we need to walk that faith with fear and trembling, knowing that, meaning that we need to be ready. We need to be ready when the trumpet will sound that we can be raptured. We shouldn't be uh, find ourselves or caught in the midst of things that are not pleasing to God. So my brothers and sisters, I will exhort us all to keep doing the work of an evangelist. Since we have answered the call as being a disciple of Christ, we need to walk in God's full step. And let us read one more uh, verse. Let us read in the book of Matthew 28, 19, please. It says, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come eat apple. Hold on. Hold on. I need a Sorry. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If uh, we put these all those verses into practice, and we want to make other disciple of Christ, we will pray for them till they get the knowledge of Christ, and we will instruct them to be baptized. That's another thing. Some people they say they have um, confessed Jesus, and that's it. It's good to go through baptism. Some of us, we were raised from the Catholic uh, background. We have Catholic background. When you are little, they sprinkle water on your head. But when you grow up and you have the knowledge of Christ, you go through baptism through immersion by going under the water and resurrect with Christ. So it's a mandate to do as well. Hallelujah. I have come to the conclusion of tonight's topic. I will say in one word that we need to reproduce ourselves by making disciples. Amen. 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 Anyone want to add to it, please? That's it for tonight. It was Amen. good. Amen. Sister Kristen, can I please go first? I'm trying to run away. Sure. All right. Thank you, Sister Gigi, for reminding us of for what it is to be a disciple. You say we should have a relationship with God. We should love God and love our neighbor. We should be obedient, trust God, and have faith in him. And the last part, you say we should be on a mission of making other disciples. Amen. Okay, thank you so much. It's like uh, you have given me uh, this important information that I have to work with every day. Definitely. 
Every day I have to make sure my relationship with God is stand, is standing, is good. I have to show that I love him and love my neighbor, be obedient to God and making disciples. Thank you so much. I'm going to write it on the board of my heart and put it into practice. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Any any more comments, feedback, thoughts, please. We're good. I'm good. Amen. Amen. Um, it really was just an awesome teaching. Thank you. It Thank was. You. Uh, it came after Sister Marley's last week, which was, you know, it really emphasized um, our relationship with God and what that looks like, you know, very actionable steps, what we need to do um, between spending time with him and, and loving our neighbors, you know, as well as what we're called to do as disciples, right? Which is um, share the gospel, the good news, amen. So it was just such a well-rounded study. I believe that we were all blessed, amen. So thank amen. you so for your time with the Lord. We pray that he would replenish your cup, amen. Amen, thank you. Family, any more feedbacks before, of course, I start calling names? Unless Pastor Jones speaks for all of us. Amen. Okay. Well, this is it. We're gonna we're gonna close out in prayer. Sister Didi, can you please seal the word for us tonight? And then we can let us pray. God Almighty, we thank you for tonight's ministration. We pray that the word that has proceeded out of my mouth was your word and it has entered into every heart and will put it into practice. We pray that the Holy Spirit will help us all in our daily work with you to be a good disciple of Christ, to follow under the first step of Jesus, to be equipped, strengthened, to go for war and to win soul for Jesus. We pray and seal all the prayers and the precious blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed, amen. 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 To God be the glory. Amen. Can we share the grace, please? Sure. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the, the love Lord. of God, and, and the, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely goodness Amen. and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 Thank you, family. Good night.